there's nothing more tranquil and beautiful than an isolated forest. Unless you happen to find yourself lost in it, then a place like this becomes one of the most menacing landscapes you could ever find. Five young women from a Perth recruitment agency who enjoy the comforts of a modern city life are about to be confronted by that exact scenario. A survival test through deep forest and into even more extreme terrain, all the while facing the challenge of do or die. How resilient are you? Do you need to toughen up? <laughs> Five inner city recruitment agents are about to discover the true meaning of a cutthroat oh environment. Oh my god, it's coming back down! In a gruelling test of outback survival. We can't stop yeah. here, no matter what, we have to keep on going. Piling on the pressure is top corporate psychologist, Dr Travis Kemp, who believes oh in the god. power of experiential learning. I've got a really strong belief that people can absolutely change. There's no point in saying something negative when there's no way around it. Yeah. These experiences are a lot about people's behaviour. If I had have known they were carrying backpacks, I wouldn't have done it. Their thinking. I just don't know, my mind's going crazy and the emotions that they feel when they're out in these wilderness environments. <laughs> so I guarantee that you're not there yet. We can't see more than 10 metres. So 10 metres is all you've got. When they've got those three things working for them, they're absolutely going to be successful in that change. But can Dr Kemp strengthen the resolve of this young startup team? To find out, he's about to turn just another day at the office into a battle for survival. is booming. There's plenty of jobs and a shortage of skilled workers. Do you want someone to start as of the 1st of March or will you start the process? Rich Peking's for a recruitment agency. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? But this is a highly competitive dog-eat-dog -dog business environment and Office People is a small new player staffed exclusively by young women. Hi Toby, it's Monique calling from Office People, how are you? Uh, yeah, and a contact number. Is there a problem? Meet Kalia. She was here first and is considered top dog. I like to have a, a leadership role in office people. I can be quite pedantic, I guess, or a bit of a perfectionist. I don't like to back down, especially when I know that I'm right. It's quite fun, um, but it can turn in an instant. As soon as something goes wrong, um, you can't help but get stressed straight away. Are you happy for me to um, keep in contact with you up until then? Second fiddle call? is Linda, who okay, believes that working at the coalface of recruitment is harder than it looks. You have that salesperson thing about you and everyone sort of runs and hides sometimes. A lot of hard people that will just tell you to bugger off or things like that, so you got to not let things like that bother you. You need to be able to handle the pressure. If you can't handle the pressure, you will stress out, lose plot maybe. <laughs> Former flight attendant Brooke has been in the job for eight months. She's still getting used to the transition from high flyer to pavement panda. Part of my job is obviously to go out, find that client. There's one of my cards, so I... There is a lot of rejection, obviously, within the cold calling, uh, but obviously you just can't let that affect you. You do have to be thick-skinned. You can't just start crying and want to go home. Um, just get over it and get on with it, and, you know, knowing that there's going to be something better the next place you might walk into. Yes, you are seeing double. This is Brooke's twin sister, Monique, another former air hostie. She's only been with office people for four months. It's tough, it's a tough gig, I think, in any sort of sales position, it's a tough gig. Um, but I do love it because I'm not stuck in the office every day. Hello, how are you? Good, thanks. You're like your own boss. No one's there telling you what to do, you know what to do. So it's just you motivating yourself and to get out there and, and doing it. And while her colleagues are out door knocking to drum up business, office junior Annabelle holds the fort. I think you definitely need to be a people person. Um, do all the jobs that no one really wants to do. I'm good because I get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Expect big things for office people. Uh, it's very, very early days. Um, I treat the business as my own at the moment and um, put in lots of, lots of effort and lots of long hours and just, um, just expecting those big rewards, which I know will come soon. Office people, five 
young recruitment reps at the beginning of their careers. But if the stresses of bringing in business is hard going now, what will happen when boom turns to inevitable bust? Will they be tough enough to adapt and survive? Or will they just give up? Bushman and corporate shrink Dr Travis Kemp believes a few days in the wilderness could make all the difference. These people are relatively young and they're at relatively early stages of their career. You know, they haven't had an extensive number of years in the corporate arena and their learning around leadership and, uh, you know, how to be successful in that environment is continuing. What we're looking for is some resiliency and, you know, what we would call mental toughness. And that starts to uh, get challenged, I guess, when people are put into tough physical conditions and especially conditions that are new to them. The city slicker recruitment agents don't realise that this is no ordinary corporate team building exercise. They will be pushed to the limit in the tough remote environment of the Western Australian outback. Traversing a landscape ranging from dense forest to endless rolling sand dunes. Camping's definitely not my preference. I'm more of a hotel resort kind of girl, cocktails around the pool, but I, I can survive. I will survive. I like camping, but not really in a tent or anything like that. Um, I wouldn't go like hiking or anything like that. I'd just generally, the most outdoors I would get is probably go to the beach. <laughs> We work well together within an office environment, but how we're going to be working together in an outside office environment is going to be a different story. It'll be interesting. Yeah, okay. I see that coming. I love adventure, but you know, put me in that position where I haven't done something before, I might think I'd love it, but I might freak out. I don't know. They don't know where they're going or what challenges they face, but one thing is for sure it's do or die. My name's Dr. Travis Kemp. And what you're about to experience is what we call adventure-based experiential learning. Mm. And there's a couple of things that make adventure-based experiential learning really unique. One is that there's some risk involved, and so there's going to be things that happen to you over the next four or five days that are going to be uncomfortable, so I can guarantee that for you. And the other thing is that there's a bit of an unsure outcome, so we don't actually know where we're going and how we're getting there a lot of the time. <laughs> you're going to have to really work together in a way that you haven't worked together before. Okay. I can assure you. Yeah. Does that all make sense? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry already. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you've brought some other clothes with you, is that right? Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's um, get changed if we can. Find a spot wherever you like. Cool. Okay. Okay. Let's go. I don't wear thongs or sneakers. <laughs> What's wrong with sneakers and jeans? No, that's kind of jeans. There's nothing go. wrong with Are you wearing grays? All right, I'm going to find a tree. Let's go. Next, Travis will present their first challenge, one that could make all the difference in their struggle to survive. What you'll be doing yeah. is making your choices about what you're going to be taking with you for the next oh. four or five days. <laughs> now, there's a couple of things to remember. On the tarp, you've got about 48 hours worth of food and water. You've got 15 minutes to make your decisions. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back together and see how you go. Mm -hmm. Over to you. So you'll grab a backpack each. Yep. The priority yeah. should be food, water, shelter, and the tools they'll need to operate effectively in this rugged terrain. Are we packing? Um, I'll get some yep. paper. What about? Um, do you need but straight up, they don't seem to have any strategy on how to make the best choices given the time pressure they're under. So I won't hurt to think about the basics, you know, water, food, shelter. Blanket. So each take a blanket pack to keep warm. Alright, let's think about food, guys. What about food? Food. Now there's a good idea. That can take up so much room. What can we eat to survive? What is that? What are all the tea stuff in here? What, Brooke? They don't seem too impressed with what's on the menu. Do you think? What's in those cans? Tuna? Ugh. Meanwhile, time is running out and Travis is getting worried. Really concerning for me at this point because I'm scared that they're going to leave stuff like food and water that they only have 48 hours worth anyway and they're going to leave some of it here. All right, so guys, what do we have? We've got things to sleep on, things so to keep warm. You know? We've got the little sheet, that little pack that I gave you. It's a bit lighter. Unless if it's going to be sleeping really bags. cold, should we just take maybe two sleeping bags? Two sleeping bags between five people? I don't know how that's going to work. It's going to be interesting anyway. And not a lot of coordination around uh, working together as a team to get the gear together. So it's a concern. We've got, cut I've got cutlery. What do you Travis think? has to step in to focus the group. 
So guys, we've got about five minutes left. We need the batteries. And I'll really encourage you to think about some basics. So you're gonna need shelter. Yes. Have you got enough stuff for shelter? Shelter, what's, what's in got the way of shelter? Is that a hat, girls? Tart, what about rope? Should we take more rope so we can hang yep. a tarp up? Ropes, yep. Yeah. Yes, in case definitely. it rains. And it's put onto your bag? Yeah, yeah. sleeping bag. Yeah. 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 Here, put one of these in the bag. So guys, you've got two minutes and then the shop's closed and no more choices. As the time pressure increases, the group forget survival and focus on fashion. I want two pairs of bathers, is that enough? How many pairs of shorts have you guys got? One. Okay guys, we need to get ourselves organised and put in a little pile so I can see what you're taking and what you're leaving. So, one minute to go. Does anyone have any more room in the bag? More, I need to get my clothes in still. Um... Okay, we're all done then. Nothing else? Shop's closed. Yeah. One of the big challenges when people are put in that uh, situation where, where they are out of their depth is that, uh, you know, they'll just sort of run around grabbing things and, and not really thinking through it. And that's what happened with this group. Some of the most basic things that you would think, yeah, well, that's obvious, like sleeping bags and, and food, for example, kind of got left on the back burner until they were prompted to, to think about whether that would be a good thing to bring or not. So that's an indication of the fact that these guys are really struggling in this environment at the moment. Maybe I might have to carry the lantern. We've got about an hour and a bit's worth of light left. So if you can sort of pick up the pace a little bit. It's late afternoon, and the priority now is to set up camp for the night. Find yourself a spot to set up your shelter and get yourself organised for the night. And I would encourage you to do it somewhere relatively close to where we are here. How you do that is completely up to you. All right, go for it. Should we go down that track? Just case it out. So we're looking Bad. for a bit of flat ground, as far as we can get, and a couple of nice big solid trees to keep the tarps up. That's, that's, that's too wide that? there, those two. You don't want to be too much in the bush. And that one we've got, like, be like that. Shelter to shelter. Shelter. It's not that big, girls. Oh, <laughs> I like the other spot. So do I. Right here, do you reckon? Yeah, or towards yeah, the tree more. Guys, why don't anyone get that okay. shovel? Yeah, oh, I think an idea. Just like loop it, it through the entire fucking knot like that. Yeah, it work. Here, oh shit, no, I wanna. It snapped. No, we think it's simple. Dark. Maybe we don't need to double it up, we can just Make it do one over hate. each of us. Think like a boy. I thought that, but boys would just trial and error, wouldn't they? Yeah. They should get it though, don't they? Have to appear with you. That's very tough. Trial and error. Okay, I'm happy with this. Thank this feels good. Yeah, it's feels like home. Yeah, for a yeah. night. Feeling very homely. If we could put the mosquitoes over the top of this. Sometime before Christmas would be nice. Are you open to some input? Yes. yes. Okay. He offers a few basic hints in the hope they can get their act together before so darkness falls. What some people do is they find a couple of trees, all right, and then what they do is they tie a piece of rope between the two trees like that really close to the, to the ground, yeah. and then they Bring lay the tarp, the tarp over it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that it hits the ground on both sides. And then you've got an open end either end, but that, that kind of doesn't matter. Better. That's called a hoochie. A lot of people use it, works all right. Hoochie, okay. cool. Let's make it a hoochie. Yeah. <laughs> it's hoochie time, girls. <laughs> you found it, Linda? Where are we going? <laughs> One hour and five locations later, they find the perfect spot. Now all they need to do is set up house and home. We've just basically made a very basic sort of sheltered... It's a hutchy. ...tent hutchy. thing, I suppose, is from what we could do, being girls. Happy. Carlia explains their grand design. Um, I think that we can lie this way. And that will fit five of us. There will be some overhang, but I think that's enough for our feet to be under. Um, and that we have the option to change it if it does start raining, that we can then pull these bits down and pin them down so that the rain doesn't come in on any sides. Oh, shoot. So I think that's a good design. Cheers, girls! Yay! Yay. That was nice. <laughs> Haven't survived yet, but we will. Annabelle. Should we put it on the inside? Because <laughs> they're right, all supposed hey? to overlap. Blissfully unaware of just how bad their shelter is, the girls snuggle up for a good night's sleep. Good night, girl. <laughs> a new dawn breaks, and while nature is calling, the group is already finding their wilderness experience a little too rugged. Didn't sleep. 
not a wink. I do not remember being asleep at all. Oh. <laughs> oh <my laughs> so God. I'm no, quite actually, tired. Last night went on for so long. <laughs> so long, like two nights in a row. I know. Not even a whole week. I know, I Considering I sleep in a chiropractic bed with a special pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> quite the opposite. <laughs> If you're like in a yeah. lodge or a cabin, you wake up and go, wow, it's beautiful. Maybe you sink like back into bed. <laughs> go back to bed. <laughs> but not when you wake up in it, literally. <laughs> With the girls tired and vulnerable, Travis begins his work. Gather around over here and we'll have a bit of a chat. We're going to be doing a fair bit of walking today. So a couple of things about safety. Uh, water, OK? When you're walking, when you're, um, I guess, expending energy, you're going to be losing water faster than normal, so keep your eye on that. Mm -hmm. The recruitment so, agents need really to pay attention. Travis's morning normal. briefing it's includes an important piece so of information that, if remembered, time. will be the, the key to their survival. Ready. If we were to get lost or separated anywhere in the area that we're in, um, the thing that I'd like you to do is to head southeast um, until you get to a river, and then follow that river to its mouth. And at the mouth, we have a rescue vehicle where there'll be water and food and shelter. Okay? Um, so, with that, we need to pack ourselves up and we'll get into it. Holy the team is about to be put to the test in a dense and disorienting forest. But first, Travis will teach them the basics of navigation. There's a couple of key things um, that we need to get a handle on. One is direction, and the other one's distance. About the only thing that we've got to measure how far we're going is how many paces we take. So between this point here and there is 50 metres. And what you guys need to do individually is work out with your packs on and your packs off <coughs> how many paces it's going to take you to cover that 50 metres. Basic orienteering may seem like a low impact activity for a bunch of people cast Check into the deep end. Pain, but, but what happens right here again. will we'll prove crucial in the coming days. So just to be on the safe side, just to give it one more crack. Wherever the arrow's pointing is what we call magnetic north, OK? So that's the reference point that we maintain throughout our whole navigation process. I'd say we're almost 50 metres. That way. No, no, the arrow's this way. Oh. So we're going this way, way. the same. Yeah. Your first task is to navigate yourself to the westernmost point of the lake that we camped on tonight. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you need to stay within about 30 to 40 metres of the lake so that you can see it. No closer, because the joy of this area is that tiger snakes are a real issue and they like hanging around the edge of water. Yep. So we're not going to get too close. And if we're too far in, we won't be able to see it. Okay. So who's the leader for our first leg? Linda. 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 Linda so Linda. when you think that we're there, let me know. So we walk this way. So pretty much. Walk that way. Hang on. So just a little bit um, off to Hang the on, left. Watch, Lin no, wait for Linda first. A little bit to the left, have you got Linda? Oh, you Linda? Straight ahead. As they set out, Travis remains deliberately vague about where this is all leading. The uncertainty is part of the challenge. The first instruction sounds simple enough. Head west, keeping the lake in sight, until you reach its westernmost point. However, over the next five days, the girls from office people will be forced to scramble and climb across an increasingly diverse and dangerous landscape. This is only the beginning. Straight ahead still. Keep going. What do you think, Travis? Should we keep going? I think you should keep going west until you get to the westernmost tip of the... I reckon too. We're going the right way, girls. Just keep heading through. The trek takes them through increasingly dense scrub. Here, you just can't see the lake for the trees. So, Linda, where's the lake from here? Right over there. there. How far? It's more than 40 more metres. Than 40 yeah. metres. Is it safe to go down? I just don't want to lead anyone to... So, my question is, if we were trying to find the westernmost point of the lake, how here. would you see it? Yeah, because we can't go anymore. Well, we can't see it, we can't see the lake. Yeah, In trying to find an easier way through the jungle, the office people have lost sight of their only navigation beacon. The lake. So we do we head back? Can we see the lake and go 40 metres from that? That's a good idea. Cool. You want me to lead? You go for it, yeah. So we can see the lake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes you just have to bash through stuff, you know? Let's do it, yeah. Okay. You got that? Yeah. 
watch your feet, guys. It gets a bit soft as well. Ooh. It's not about to get any easier. Watch out, it's so freaking disgusting. The dense bush is Water turning snakes, boggy yeah. underfoot. The perfect habitat for deadly tiger snakes. <laughs> yep. What are all oh my God. socks? This is definitely no walk in the park. You right? Based on your pacing, how far do you think you've come? Has anyone been pacing? I was, and then I forget, and then so I start, the start again. Well, we have to have paced out from when we started. And if you miss it? Huh, I see. Well, so, so a few things to think about, guys. We could have well missed it. Is it a river or a lake? Lake. A lake, sorry. Travis, does a lake turn into a river? Your task to refocus on that is to get to the westernmost tip of the lake. Are you there yet? Don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're here. I was going to. Yay! Go team, go! <laughs> Woo! Which way is where? Ah! From where, where are we going? See? So I guarantee yeah. that you're not there yet. Travis is being unhelpful for a good reason. The point of all this is for the team to work this out for themselves. Focus, make decisions, and work together. This strategy will be crucial over the next few days. Through there. Perhaps. Which way was Westlander? That way. Straight through. No. Straight through here. Up a bit and right. Yeah, it makes, makes a right. big difference. That way. Right behind that big tree. Yeah. So Linda, are we at the westernmost tip now? We're at all the shrub scale, which means that we're still in it, aren't we? Did you know every time I ask Linda where she is, you answer? I'm sorry. Did you notice that? Linda, he's talking to you. Sorry? Linda, are we there yet? I think so, unless I need to stand more in there. And so make a call. So, yes. So that's your final right answer? Yeah. Yes. Well done. You are on the westernmost point of the lake. Well done. So far, so good. It's now early afternoon, and there endeth lesson one. Sometimes you have to go the hard way because that's the right way. Would you like to swap leaders? Sure. Give someone else a go? Absolutely. Yep. Who wants to go? Who wants to go? I'll go. Hell yeah, cool. Come first. Oh, so the leadership your passing from yep. Linda to Kalia, Travis sets the, the next yes. challenge. Handy. Take us on a bearing of 200 degrees for a distance of 1.5 kilometres. Goodness gracious. Whoa. At which point <laughs> you should find a track. A track? When you reach the track, take it until it ends. Have it? Yeah. So given the... Um, Given how dense that bush was, you might want to sort of think about sending somebody out in front, lining yeah. up your bearing, okay. cool. walking to that person. That's just a suggestion. Lesson two is adapt and survive. It's slow going and the scrub is as dense as ever, making it hard to keep bearings. So every time you deviate from the bearing, then you're changing where you're going. So that's the point in throwing somebody out in front. We tried the... it, we can't see more than 10 metres and so, we can't keep the count. So 10 metres is all you've got. So you're taking double as much time. One person goes, then the rest go. And if it's already gonna take three hours and it takes five, then... Increasingly frustrated, the girls start to look for a way out. You just lead the way. I must follow you. Seriously. Okay. We'll still walk through the bush. Can no. You they're in a space which is really sort of depressing their mood, if you like, and they're really just trying to get their head around that and struggle through it. All right, Annabelle, towards that big tree. <laughs> and count paces. <laughs> Go in a straight line if you can, Annabelle. Yeah. I'm going to go straight that way. Head towards the left yeah, as soon as you can. Cool. Stay right there. We'll meet you there. These guys have never been out in this environment, so it's drawing on their energy uh, immensely. They're starting to uh, tap into that anxiety because they don't know what they're doing and where they're going. 
two hours later, they've still only managed to cover a few hundred meters. It's a hot, hard, heavy slog. Could things get any worse? Ah! Oh, 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 oh my God, it's coming back down. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, wait, 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 get off it! Molly, get off it! Get out, get out, Mole. It's going down. Look at wait, it. It's got okay. fangs. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. Anything gross. else blood is on me? Oh, yeah. God. You're right. Okay. Yeah. You would have thought it was a snake. I know, but it's a massive spider. It well, it looks big. Oh. After their close encounter with nature, they press on with a new determination to get to the end of this as soon as possible. So 600 metres. What's the time now? Quarter past, past four. four. I'm halfway. I feel like it's the same. Right, it's right. Straight through. Straight yep. From 30. 30? Yep. Woo. It's taken three hours to walk just 1,500 metres. But finally, oh, as nice. per Travis's instructions, Woo. they've found the track. All right. For now. All right. Now they just need to follow where it takes them. Oh my god, it's so. After a long, tiring trek, what could be better than a beach and a nice, cool, refreshing swim? Oh, there's no water. But no, it's not a beach. It's the beginning of something that's going to turn out to be really bad. Is that? Is this the end of the track? Well, the track ended a long time ago. Looks like the end of the track to me. Are you serious? This is it. They don't know it yet, but the girls from Office People are on the edge of a giant inland dune system stretching as far as the eye can see. This is your camping spot for tonight. Where's the water? You're carrying it? Yeah. 5.30, you've probably got another hour and a bit of light. Huh. Right. So I'll leave you to it and we'll catch up a bit later on. It's been an exhausting day, and the city slicker recruitment agents are now well outside their comfort zone. They don't know where they are, or even why they're here. A bit pointless. Yeah. yeah I, I see what like it's, it's for, but... I feel like it's just, yeah. I don't think it's going to help us at work. No, I didn't either. Like, we know, yeah, like, you know, when you can do something, you put, if you put your mind to something, you can do it. Like, I understand that theory of it, but... We don't see how this will help us at work. It'll help us on a personal level to get to know each other as people, but... If I had have known them were carrying backpacks, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, I don't understand how we can't shower at the end of the day. Like, the whole... That during the day is hard enough. At least shower. At least water. The girls are doing it tough. For Travis, it's the perfect time to start seeding ideas. There's a couple of different types of complaining. There's kind of recreational complaining, which is I'm just having a bitch and like, oh, you know, they're useless and I can't work with this person and that, that sort of negative complaining. And that's really destructive to organisations. And then there's committed complaining, which is I'm not happy with the situation. I know I can't change the situation, but I can change what I'm going to do in response to it. Yeah. And I'm going to design a way that I can be more successful in this environment. And that we find in successful teams um, all the time and it's one of the core capabilities that they have. So I guess the opportunity in this environment where you are feeling so tired and it is so uncomfortable and it's so, you know, you know the worst place that you ever want to be on the planet, <laughs> is um, to, to look for ways to respond to that sort of situation in, in, in um, a fashion that you haven't responded to situations like that in the past. Mm. A situation like today, like I knew Annabelle was struggling, I was struggling, I was like, Annabelle, like, this is... Shit. Like it's, we're not used to this. Like we'll we'll get through it. Like you know what I mean. I think if you hear someone else saying how bad it is for them as well, it doesn't make you feel so bad. And that's that's a really positive side of that. And the negative side of that is when people get into this vortex of this is a really crappy place and I don't want to be here, and mm. kept, they start to reinforce that. Yeah. yeah. What we have now is like another um, another three days of opportunity to start to look at that in a slightly different way, 
to say, you know, this is the situation and it's unpleasant perhaps and it might be uncomfortable, but I wonder how I can respond to this situation in a different way to be successful. So Travis's message is suck it up, sunshine, adapt and survive. After all, tomorrow's another day. Are we doing that again tomorrow? Tomorrow's um, activity will be challenging for you. <laughs> oh, There's no question about that. Um, it'll be in a different environment. Thank and, God. Um, and you'll have an opportunity to apply everything that you learnt through your experience today and refine your efforts tomorrow. In fact, by tomorrow, they really will have something to whinge about. Halfway through their wilderness adventure, the city slicker recruitment agents find themselves a long way from the comforts of home. Oh, the group has been gradually learning how to adapt to new and challenging environments. Oh. Oh, oh, what he said about not being able to do anything about it, Molly. Now, that's about to be taken to a whole new level. So they've woken up this morning and obviously they're waiting for me to show up. Um, I'm taking myself out of the picture today. I'm going to leave them to their own devices and uh, they're going to be on their lonesome. Travis believes that by disappearing and triggering what will become a survival scenario, he can also trigger a radical shift in their behaviour, turning them from whingers to warriors. Now, hopefully when they realise that I'm not around, they're going to start to remember a couple of things that I shared with them yesterday and they'll start to head off, use their own initiative and, and get themselves where they need to be. Did he say he'll see us today? Or did he say good luck tomorrow? But who else would tell us what to do, though? What? What do for us to do today? Ourselves. That's why we need to have been listening the whole time. It doesn't take them long to figure out their situation <laughs> is serious. Well, we did say if we get lost, to, or we head to the... Head to yeah, the, I can yeah, either head back to the if we get lost. If we're not here by 10, maybe we'll just start trekking our way through the dunes. Yeah, we can't just... Yeah, but where? Up and go. Southeast. Not through the dunes. Which will get us back to the river, maybe? Yeah. Or through the jeans. Yeah, southeast is that way. Shit. Travis's instructions to head southeast in search of a river would send them directly out across the dune system. But without knowing how far it stretches, that's a daunting prospect. That could be walking into a danger zone sort of thing. You know, not the, the smartest thing. Like, they could only yeah. go for, like, till we see the bushes, or it could be a little bush and then it could be more dunes. And we've got limited water. If we walk anyway, I say we take the track. We've got cover. Someone just tell us what to do. There's tendency for the group to want to take an easier option. Now, the track, um, I guess, psychologically is a much easier option, regardless of where it's going and, and how it's going to get them there. The information that they have is very clear. They need to head southeast, and that means heading directly across the dune system. So hopefully they will have the courage and commitment, I guess, to take that course of action rather than to look at alternatives that don't make sense. The dunes seem to have an answer at the end. Still I just, I just don't know. My mind's going crazy. Has he ever said anything about taking an issue? Yeah, he has, hasn't he? Yeah. Making that executive decision. Yeah. So which, which way is the compass pointing. After trying to avoid the issue, they return to the first hmm? lesson. Sometimes you have to go the hard way, yeah, because that's the right yeah, way. Yeah, he's over that way. What's everyone's gut feeling telling them? Dunes. Dunes. So the sand dunes it is. <laughs> we can run, Billy. What they don't realise is this system stretches for over 10 kilometres. Climbing soft, shifting sand hills in extreme heat is exhausting. This is not just hard, it's dangerous. This is a disorienting and frightening environment. And it takes no prisoners. I can't walk, keep walking in this. Like, surely if someone was lost, they wouldn't, he wouldn't expect us to walk this far by ourselves. That water. <laughs> Just look around you, there's just sand dunes for miles. Already, after just a couple of hundred metres, 
Linda and Annabelle, the office junior, have that thousand yard stare. And for a perfectionist like Carlia, the uncertainty is making leadership impossible. What are you thinking, Carlia? I have no fucking idea. Can't sit here all day, girls. Finally, they take a much needed leap of faith. Steps. You're so well. It's a high hill. I see it's pretty It's early afternoon. It's nudging 40 degrees, and they've been foot slogging for nearly three hours with no end in sight. <laughs> oh my God! What the hell? Oh. How you guys doing? Hungry. So much energy. Look how far we've come. It's huge. Look how far we have to go. So halfway across this dune system, there's um, a long way between them and safety right at the moment. They're in the middle of nowhere, literally, and I think they're really starting to understand that this is a serious scenario that they're facing. They're going to have to make some committed and, and uh, wise decisions to stay well and to look after themselves and to get through this journey. So I think it's really hitting home to them that uh, you know they're not having a game out here. This is real. We have to keep going, push through it. Yeah, yeah. at least if we make it to the bush, we've made it to cover. Exactly. Yeah, that's right, we can't stop yeah. here, no matter what. We have to keep on going. <laughs> Annabelle, it's not far, you can't sit here. I can't just stop. Where to go? She'll keep going. So who wants to mark out? I will. Yeah, me and I will. Hey, Ma! Come on, Linda. I'll drag her up here if I have to. Yeah. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Okay, girls. Getting to the top of the hill. By geeing each other along and using each other as markers to maintain their southeast bearing, they're slowly but surely making progress. I'm really hoping there's something exciting over the top of that hill, but I've thought that many hills ago, so we'll Still see what it's going there, doesn't it? Top of the hill. It does. The top of the hill, the top of the hill, and then we'll, we'll see what goes on, so. Hopefully, there'll be something exciting over there. I feel there is. Those mountains are really close and they were in the far horizon when we started this, so we've come a long way. Another hill. Doesn't Doesn't matter. Be the guys. Every time we get to the top, we've achieved it. For Travis, this could be the turning point he's been looking for. The interesting thing is that they seem to be getting stronger the further into this journey that they get. I think they're starting to see that they're, they're actually going to survive this and that they can survive it and they've got a little bit more resilience than they might have thought that they had. Yeah. We're awesome. The end is in sight, but now there's a new challenge on the horizon. A monster storm is closing in fast. I smell rain. After seven hours solid trekking, they've made it to the other side of the dunes. But there's no river to be found and they're still a long way from the designated safe point. I think I have the right. For now, they'll set up a shelter and take cover from the storm. I think how all of our minds were mentally exhausted. I can't even think. I can't even think of what I'm thinking of. No, exactly. I feel sorry for them at one level because it's kind of like being in a wave zone. You know, they get bashed by this huge wave and they come up the other side and think, wow, I've survived that. And then all of a sudden there's another wave to hit them. And, and this rain is just another wave of, um, I guess, a test to see whether they can persist through uh, another challenge. It smells delicious. So how's the resilience thing going? God, this whole experience is hard, like living in a bush and 
walking, walking for miles. And, and you know, in the I don't mind having to walk, but knowing what to walk, what I'm walking for, or is there something, or I know where I'm heading to, I know how far I'm walking to, but I think, yeah, I think it's just, it's gruelling, it's, it's tough. Kalia is in no mood for any recreational complaining. There's no point in saying something negative when there's no way around it. Yeah. Just got to keep going. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah, there's no point saying negative things to bring everyone else down and make them realise that, oh, I do agree. Shit, like, this is really bad. Like he was saying yesterday, but sometimes you just can't help it. Yeah, exactly. Venting's fine. With the rain about to sorely test their new resolve, the girls are coming to understand what it really means to tough it out. The rain has settled in. Here we go again. But it has not dampened the spirits of the City Slicker recruitment agents. They've woken up determined, even surprised at themselves. I didn't think I'd be as mentally strong as I would. Um, I guess you don't get to put that into practice back at home. I'm not in too many situations where it's that mentally and physically draining, especially at the same time. We'd have the, the energy and the motivation to get up to the top of the hill, but as soon as you look over that top and there's just sand for as far as you can see, you just can't help but feel in a down mood, at least for you know a couple of seconds. And then we just knew that we had to keep going again. It really was that, that up and that down, every uphill and downhill for the whole day. Your survival instinct kicks in and you just have to keep going. All of that, I guess, just fades away almost. Linda found it really tough going in the sand dunes, but digging deep has its rewards. I really struggled. It was just so intense. Um, yeah, it really, really messed with us, I guess. And, and out in the sun and the elements, you just, it's just so hard to describe um, what it's really like and just, after every June, you think that's it, and to see so many more, and, and you just never th think it's never going to end. Take it harder. You've really got to think and focus and just be as strong as you can be and, and not give up. No matter what you have to go through, you've just got to keep on pushing forward to try and, to try and get to the end. Otherwise, you're going to die. You just have to do it or die. Even office junior Annabelle is feeling kind of philosophical. I'm not going to be happy about it or anything like that, but I'm not going to be angry about it either because what's the point of that? It's not going to get us anywhere. Maybe I don't have the mental ability to do this or not, but I think I'm doing pretty well for my age. I don't think my friends would be able to do this. And with their supplies dwindling, they are determined to stay on their southeast bearing until they find the river that will take them to the safety vehicle. Even running the gauntlet of huge spiders is no longer an issue. Go. These are women on a mission. Oh. <laughs> it's like a rainforest, yeah. hey? Oh no, I've got track pants on. Right. It'll be one step, maybe you can only get one foot wet. Come on girls, pretty Annabelle. <laughs> no. Wait, can I just try and tie my track oh, pants no. on? Do go! Oh sorry. Give me a hand. Thanks Annabelle. Sorry, yeah. not Annabelle. <laughs> yeah, no so, ew, my socks are so right. Oh, it's Three, two right. steps. I'll, I'll <laughs> Finally, after days of toil and uncertainty, the girls are about to find their passage to safety. They've located the river as per Travis's instructions. But which way is the mouth? How much further is that? And how are they going to get there? Uh, a boat. 
Thanks. Why is there a boat over there? That's what um, we need to use. Fuck off. Yeah. Do you reckon? Oh, there's a boat! I'm hoping for paddles. Is that a paddle me? there? What's that? Oh, oh, that it is a paddle! Well, I didn't boat. even see that. Paddle. We could be onto something here. You ready for this? No, my jeans are already oh, wet. No, so she's wet wetter. For Linda, this is an opportunity to test herself even further. I've always had a bit of a fear of swimming where I can't see the bottom and I hate things touching my feet in water. I'll just freak out. I'll freak out. I really was determined to, to be one of the girls to swim across and, and prove to myself that I could do it. I was like, I've gone this far. I've done so much already. I want to know that I can do everything. Linda braves her fears in the full knowledge that her colleagues are right behind her. I can see your tram stem. I'll climb on top. Okay. Okay. Oh no, it's ground. <laughs> We're sweet. Yeah. Oh, hold on, let me get up. You all right? I'm scared. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just roll it down. Yeah. Let's get us out first. Be careful! Don't. Rescue's on its way, girls! Okay, now girls, which way? Well, whichever way the river flows is the we'll way to go. Into the... Should we see, just put the boat out and see where the boat floats? Yeah. What a difference a day makes. Yesterday, it was sub-Saharan conditions. Now, it's driving rain and the temperature has dropped 15 oh. degrees. Two, yeah, three, four, five, six. The rowing technique is unorthodox. Still, slowly but surely, they're covering the kilometres. Hey. This group is constantly surprising me with their energy and their persistence and their resilience, you know. It really highlights the importance of setting, you know, small, achievable goals and persisting with those goals over time. And it's made a huge difference to the success. Might be through here, girls, like through that bit. It's been three hours of solid rowing in persistent rain. But with the river mouth in view, the end is nigh. Let's row us to the beach. Woo! Seagulls! Aye! Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I see it! At last, the safety vehicle is in reach. Oh. Finally, the recruitment agents have made it back to safety, food and water. As a group, they are buoyed by their success. They've come a long way and achieved a lot. So there's an overall story to this group. If there's a theme to their experience, it's certainly been about resilience and persistence and mental toughness. You know, the group came into this experience anxious and really not sure about what they were doing and how they were going to do it. And after the first day, most of them didn't even want to be here, it was so hard. And they've managed to overcome that thinking, to reframe the way they've been thinking, and to really, I guess, for want of a better word, transcend that negative thinking, to become much more positive and, and develop a new sense of belief in their ability to be able to do things that are extremely hard. At least we know now that, you know, we can push each other. And, yeah. and if we need to, that we can all work together. If, if there is, you know, a challenge that's thrown on, at us that's really big, that's then right. don't have to be, be worried about it. We know. We can we do it. We, we know how we work together to achieve yeah, it. So. that's it. It 
It's the last day, and the team from Office People are now confident enough to take on new challenges, including four-wheel driving themselves home. Everyone kept everyone motivated, so yeah, I'm so happy that I actually did it, went through it, because it's just the best feeling. Definitely thinking about how different things will be when we get back. It's definitely been an experience that I will never forget. As the recruitment agents retrace their steps across the dunes back to civilization, Travis's message is that yes, all of us city folk need to be resilient if we want to survive in a competitive business world. And the industry that they're in goes in cycles, the business cycles. Now, when you're in a high, everything is great and business is wonderful, it's not all that hard to be positive. Wow. Wow. Bravo. But when the cycle goes into a negative place, it's much harder to maintain some positive energy and to be committed to continue to work hard. They're gonna take this experience of being in adverse conditions, really tough conditions and not knowing what to do. Hey! Applying that into the workplace when things don't look so well and they'll be much more positive and effective as a result. The girls from Office People have shown that when the going gets tough, they are tough enough to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, guys. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's get back in the car and follow me. Back in the big smoke, the recruitment agents from office people are busier than ever. Can you tell me more about yourself first? Business is booming with more orders and new clients. Right afternoon, it's quite busy. So have they <laughs> taken the lessons from the wilderness back into the workplace? It is a much better office. We've become a really close-knit team. We've helped each other a lot more. And I think it will have a flow-on effect to our clients and candidates and really help us to step up in the recruitment industry. Obviously, confidence is a huge part of our job. And just feeling like you can do it, like that can-do attitude. You know, if you come to work and you've got that and, you know, you're feeling confident and, you know, you've got, you know, we've got higher targets and, and bigger goals, so, you know, you want to achieve them. So it does make you work harder and I think when you work harder, you see results, which is what we're getting. I'm well, I'm just ringing to see if you got the email I sent through yesterday, are you okay? I'm really enjoying how I feel now and I guess I'm a lot more comfortable within myself and confident with the choices I make now as well and decisions. Um, I hope this calmness stays, you know, maybe after a while day-to-day -day life will, will build up again and it might slowly start creeping but then I just need to go throw myself out in the 